It's okay. So am I. It's okay. If you want to slow down, I'll talk to you more. We do a good like. It's really easy for people to get stuck in a rut after being hit with life and they feel like that's it, it's over. But life doesn't end with shortcomings or end when you get knocked down. Life ends when you're dead. And until you're dead, life's got more beatings in store for you. So remember, life is about how hard you can get hit and still hit back. If you feel like you're going through hell, you gotta keep going. Cause that's how winning's done with consistent progress, even if it's just at a snail's pace, never give up and always move forward. That's what this video is gonna be about. It's how do you figure out how to move forward regardless of how hard life decides to hit. For me, YouTube has always been a great source of inspiration and motivation. Watching somebody else go through something and seeing how they deal with adversity gives me the motivation to do it myself so if in me telling my story somehow communicates to somebody a way to figure out how to move forward through their adversity, that's a positive, that's the objective of this video. For me, in the beginning, it was getting into shape. I was always athletic as a kid, but I was always a big kid. Before my wedding, I was about 375 pounds and I was carrying some laundry up a couple flights of stairs. And by the time I got to the second flight of stairs, I was like out of breath panting and I was like no this isn't this is no good we got to fix this but I was so discouraged about how do you how, how, how am I supposed to get back in shape from where I am now I went to weigh myself and I needed two scales to fucking weigh myself this is not good but then I found Mark Bell and he got me motivated so over the course of about a year I dropped uh, about 65 pounds and got back into the same kind of shape I had when I played football uh, strength went up everything felt great about myself and just continued with his mantra which was basically if you look up mark bell look up fuck your elbow and if you don't know it already and then the other concept that he really hit me with that just stuck with me is the idea that no matter what you're struggling with there's always something you can do you know if like if you break your arm you, you can ride a bike if you break your leg you can I don't know, train your arms, you know, like there's always something that you can do to move forward, to keep progressing, to keep going towards a goal. So that's how YouTube and Mark Bell specifically really uh, changed my life and sort of gave me a new uh, life hack on how to uh, deal with challenges and adversity in life. So lost a bunch of weight, got in great shape, married a beautiful woman. Uh, about a year later, we opened our own business called Za Pizzeria. Um, it was a cool little pizza shop uh, in Toronto and uh, we had about two years of kicking ass in life pretty good until life decided to hit back real hard and the first thing uh, was testicular cancer so I, I find a lump um, and I'm kind of not sure what it is you know hoping yeah maybe it's not that maybe it's something else uh, so I go to the doctor and Unfortunately, he misdiagnoses me, tells me, you know what, it's just a cyst, don't worry about it, take some antibiotics, you'll be fine. So go ahead and do that. Uh, at the same time that I find the lump, uh, my wife's grandfather, who's the person who funded uh, us opening this pizzeria and was the reason we were able to do it, um, he starts to get sick and ends up passing away pretty suddenly. Um, so right after he passes away basically is when uh, the antibiotics are done and uh, my uh, nut is still getting bigger so things are not good. Go back to the doctor, he finally goes, okay yeah that's not good, let's get an ultrasound. Get the ultrasound, find out that it's definitely not good and we gotta get it removed right away. So uh, that was within like two days, getting the ultrasound and having it removed which uh, it's not the end of the world, but as a guy, losing a testicle is, is never fun. Um, it, they come as a pair, you intend for them to stay as a pair, so uh, being a soldier down for the rest of my life you know, was a bit of a, a, bit of a pill to swallow. Um, but if that's all it's going to be, it's okay, we can get through it, let's move on. Um, 
About a month after the surgery, they do another test, find out that, yep, my numbers are still high, I'm gonna have to have chemotherapy. Uh, so this is where, again, life has really just given us one blow after another uh, at this point. So it's nine weeks of chemo, uh, it takes me about three and a half months in total before I'm starting to feel at all normal again. It was intense, uh, lost all my hair, lost a bunch of weight, um, not really good weight either, just muscle and stature, was still pretty fat. Um, and just my mental energy, my mental health was what really suffered. I was super depressed, super un under motivated, super just in a really bad headspace. And um, so once I'm back on my feet now, uh, again, in, uh, about a month after chemo stops, I'm able to start doing stuff again relatively normally. Um, go back for another checkup and find out that no, it's not over yet. You got to go in for another surgery. And this is a big surgery. It's called an RPLND, uh, which is basically they cut me from sternum or from chest to uh, pelvis and they open me up. They pull your insides out. They scrape your spine to get rid of the lymph nodes so that it can't keep spreading up the lymph nodes. And uh, then they put everything back and stitch you back up and oh, you should be fine to go. Uh, well, at this point, i am gained a lot of weight again. It's been two years of running a pizzeria, not going to the gym and basically living on pizza. So I'm back up around 350, not as big as I was before, but still uh, a lot bigger than I should be. And uh, the surgery leaves me with a big scar and that scar eventually starts to turn into a hernia. So this is where I hit my real major low point, the fall of 2017. And by the spring of 2018, I end up getting diagnosed that I have super low testosterone. So that's gonna be for a whole nother video, but I did in the spring of 2018 start uh, TRT, like testosterone replacement therapy. So take a small dose, 175 milligrams to 200 milligrams a week from that point on and it doesn't make a huge difference at first the mood swings stop the depression starts to stop so that's good by the fall of 2018 i'm starting to feel motivated again like maybe you know i'm back in the gym and start trying to think what is there that i can do well i figure out you know what i can still bench press pretty good Regardless of the hernia, as long as I don't use too much leg drive, it's so much upper body driven that, and I'm laying down, it's relatively safe. Why don't we work towards a bench only meet? That's something to work towards. For me, I always need something to work towards. If I don't have a goal, I, I, I f can't figure out what it is I need to do in the gym and then I have a hard time staying motivated to keep going to the gym. So I needed a goal. So bench only competition at the pro show the Toronto Pro Show in the spring. It was, I think at that point, eight months away or seven months away uh, from when I decided that that's what I was gonna do. And uh, and Alex, uh, I knew Alex at the time and I asked him to write me the program and sort of train me to get to the Pro Show so that it you know helped keep me on track and, and just like, I wanted to do it properly. So work towards the Pro Show, <clears throat> train hard that whole time. Uh, kicking ass and really starting to feel motivated again, really starting to feel like getting some of my mojo back and uh, get to the pro show. <clears throat> the goal was to bench 402, just to break 400 pounds. And based on the way that I've been lifting the gym, um, I, that was definitely there. I tripled 365, I'd hit uh, 385 and 391 uh, for easy singles in the gym and when I got to the meet 391 it just it moved like lightning it was awesome 402 is definitely gonna go up but it didn't once I got to 402 it was just that extra effort that extra like too much force that with the hernia just couldn't handle it and no nope, didn't get it and I was strong enough I probably could have doubled 385 at the at that point. So I definitely should have been able to bench 402. So I'm starting to feel that like depression set in again, like, fuck, what is it? Like, what am I working towards? What am I supposed to, how am I gonna, 
how am I going to progress at this? What what is it that I can do? You know, I need something to compete for. I need the, the bench press isn't enough. It's just competing against myself, and it just wasn't enough. And as I'm leaving the pro show, I see Arm Fight Club and the amateurs. I think it was arm wrestling. It was just the end of it. But there were guys. There was tables. They were arm wrestling. I was like, this looks fucking cool. So went home, got on YouTube, found Devin. As soon as I found Devin, it was like my new Mark Bell. It was like starting all over again. He explained how arm wrestling is like a martial art with your hand, and I was I was hooked. So instantly, I'm like, okay, I'm going to train. Everything is for arm wrestling now. No more bench press, just arm wrestling. Start training for arm wrestling. And really quick, in the arm wrestling training, I figure out that you can't train alone. You need a team. This sport is about community. That's what makes this sport so special. And that's what I was learning from Devin real quick as well. It's about the community. It's about gripping up with different people. It's about feeling different hands because everybody's different and it's a martial art and you gotta, you gotta learn how to pull. Just getting strong in the certain vectors isn't gonna be enough. You gotta pull with people. So I start trying to find people. Well, there's a table at the gym. I've seen the table all the time, but I've never seen anybody use it. Talk to the gym owner, end up over the course of a week getting in touch with the guys that do it, meet with them on Sundays, and go for my first practice. Can barely drive my car home afterwards. I am so sore, but I'm so dedicated. At this point, like with all the pain and suffering that I've been through, dealing with like elbow pain for a couple months to, to like temper yourself to be better at this sport that I wanted to do was like it was nothing to me and it was also the idea that oh there's gonna be a lot of people that don't want to go through that pain and suffering that I, that I can probably beat out just on that level there you know because I know I can deal with the pain and suffering that's 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 not a big issue at this point um, so anyway start to find the community find out there's two Fortises Fortis West and the original Fortis that I go to they both have arm wrestling they do it on different days Fortis West does it on Wednesdays Fortis does it on uh, Sundays so I can go to both practices and it's just this newfound purpose and 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 the the again from going through cancer and all that shit that we went through it was just the idea that you you, you only live once if you want something to happen you got to make it happen waiting or hesitating for life to bring something to you is just never going to work if you want it you got to go for it so it was everything at that point i pushed myself make sure to get to a tournament quickly so within a month of starting to practice i went to my first tournament turns out devin is at the tournament so i end up meeting devin within the first month and the other thing that you find out about the sport as you start to get into it is that everybody is super super cool I mean, there's obviously a couple dickheads out there, Chris Gabby, but uh, for the most part, everybody is cool as shit, and everybody is so open to in, like introducing you to the sport, welcoming you to the sport, you know? So when I met Devin, he was super down to earth, uh, and all the guys that were at the meet were super down to earth, and I was just blown away that I, I met him right off the bat. Um, and from that point on I just stayed on top of it I realized this sport is about networking it's about getting to know all these people and connecting with all these people and staying connected with all these people so I tried to stay in touch with Devin I tried to stay in touch with the other people that I met at the meet I tried to meet as many more clubs as I could go to as many more tournaments as I could and within six months of that first tournament Devin is in Toronto at Fortis hosting a seminar and it's the first time he's ever hosted a seminar in Toronto which is crazy just that Toronto's kind of like that but um, it's the first time that he's actually here in Toronto and there's a bunch of guys that are at this uh, you know seminar who have never gotten a chance to meet Devin before even though he just lives in Ottawa and uh, and he's so open to like just come and practice um, but it was just so crazy to be a part of pulling that whole thing together and at the same time I get to arm wrestle John Milne. He kicked my ass on right hand, but I did beat him on left. So it's the beginning of progress. A month later, uh, at uh, Pulling for Veterans, I beat Joe Gould, who is like kind of an Ontario legend, and that was a big deal. Then about a month later, I end up making this Ontario rankings list uh, 
number 10 for left arm at super heavies. And I'm only like eight months into like participating in this sport. So I'm just, I'm blown away at A, how, how accepting the sport is, how open it is, but also feeling like, hey, maybe this is something I'm actually not bad at, I could be good at. Cause I'm doing all this still with the hernia. Um, and at that point, it really given me the motivation that if I get this hernia fixed, I could be an even better arm wrestler. So let's go get the surgery booked. Let's figure out what I got to do for any kind of weight loss or, you know, getting this uh, getting this surgery done and, and getting this hernia fixed so I can be a better arm wrestler. So it's just really starting to change my life and giving me motivation to, again, really have a purpose and have something to work towards and have a, have a real uh, um, reason. To, to move forward, you know? Um, and then about a month later, COVID hits. And it's like all this work I've been doing towards, I'm gonna become an arm wrestler and arm wrestling, and then all of a sudden everything shuts down. And again, I, there's no way I was gonna let that stop me. There's gotta be a way to move forward. So, well, I'm gonna train like crazy, and I can pull with Alex at least once a week. And turns out that some other people don't mind. They wanna pull as well. They're not worried about it. So. Let's keep arm wrestling. And you know what? Let's start a YouTube channel about arm wrestling because I got nothing else to do. Everything else is shut down. I can't work. I might, I'm just stuck at home and I can't just train all the time. So Alex and I started uh, Table Monkeys and start an arm wrestling channel. And then about a month and a half after that or two months, whatever it was after that, realizing, you know what? We can just throw tournaments here. We just hire a ref and, and set up the matches. Let's start the BAL. So we start the BAL. And just keep progressing it and keep moving forward. And, you know, through the summer, BAL was really cool. Took some beatings, gave some beatings. Overall, it was an awesome summer. And it ends with me finally getting the surgery for the hernia, which means I've been knocked all the way back down to the beginning again. All I can do is walk around. I can't even pick up more than 10 pounds. I can't really train. All I got for training, is this trusty hammer here. It's just a heavy stick so I can work my hand because I can't lift anything. But once I heal up, I will be able to lift something. And until I can heal up, I'll be doing whatever I can to get better and to keep on track to make sure that I'm always moving forward and never giving up. So I hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, please leave feedback in the comments, subscribe for new videos, and never give up. Keep moving forward. Monkeys out. Peace. Go! Oh, we in that hook, tiny pride. Go! Oh, it's not goofing too much. Pride is on.